Do you find yourself forgetting some things every now and then? I'll be the first to admit that I do. I forget where I put my car keys and what errands I need to run and when I'm driving my car I sometimes feel lost. Failing to recognize a route that I've taken before probably a thousand if not a million times. My memory isn't great and chances are you're probably a little forgetful too. But why? Why are we so forgetful? Is it a normal part of aging or is there something a little more sinister at play? Well, I'm probably just a little bit too young to be developing dementia, but a common idea as to why we've become so forgetful as a society is that in this day and age we're just bombarded by too many bits and pieces of information all trying to compete for our attention, which makes it hard to focus. And when it's hard to focus, it's hard to retain information. It's probably why a number of studies were able to demonstrate that simply having your phone out on your work table can lead to reduced productivity and impedes learning in a classroom environment. However, according to a new study published in the scientific journal Translational Psychiatry, there could very well be another culprit lurking in the shadows, one you wouldn't necessarily suspect affects memory. Childhood Sugar Consumption Sugar Crisp is fun to eat three ways, as a cereal with milk or cream, as a snack, any time of day, or as candy right out of the box. Remember, as a cereal, it's dandy. For snacks, it's so handy. Or eat it like candy. Post Sugar Crisp. My name is Hashim and I'm a University of Cambridge graduate and student doctor, and this is my YouTube channel, Doctor Tell Me Why. If you haven't been here before, then just know that I post weekly medical videos about the latest groundbreaking medical research, I tell you about all these fascinating medical conditions and give you top tips on how to live longer, stronger and well of course, healthier. So if this sounds like something that you want to see more of here on YouTube, then I don't blame you and two, you should hit that like button right now and subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. Sugar is literally everywhere you look. You'll find far too much of it in places it should be and a significant amount in places it really should not be in. And if you consume some form of a Western diet, then chances are you're consuming too much sugar. Generally, it's recommended adults consume no more than 30 grams of added sugar each day or what is roughly seven sugar cubes. And children should consume a little less between 20 and 25 grams of added sugar a day, depending on their age. The average American, meanwhile, consumes more than 70 grams of added sugar, or more than 220 grams of total sugar a day. If you do the math, I think you'll find it adds up to nothing good. And to put this into perspective, just 200 years ago, the average person consumed approximately 20 grams of sugar, well within the recommended guidelines and far less sugar than what we pump into our bodies today. Which brings me on to this new study that we will be looking at today. The scientists in this study used an animal model to investigate the effects of high sugar consumption during childhood and adolescence on memory function in adult life. They did this by dividing their animal model rats into two groups, one that consumed a normal diet and another that had free access to sugar, and observing their performance as adults through carefully designed memory tests. And so today I'll be presenting their findings to you and tell you why I feel that they're significant, as well as describe the possible biological mechanisms that might be at play here, or how excess sugar consumption during childhood and adolescence can lead to deteriorating memory function down the line many years later. As always, you should find references in the description below, including a link to the full text of the original study, should you wish to have a read of it yourself. In the description, you should also find chapters and links to my various social media accounts, should you wish to follow me on there too. The scientists were able to show that young rats that had been given free access to a sugary sweet solution, largely resembling soft beverages us humans consume, went on later to perform significantly worse on memory tests as adults. But while memory testing showed significant impairment in context-driven or situational or episodic memory, memory that was independent of context was largely preserved. Meaning that while there were observable differences in context-dependent memory, there were no significant differences between the two groups of rats in context-independent memory. But what exactly do I mean by context? Context-dependent memory is waking up in the morning and remembering where exactly in the house you put your car keys, or where you live in relation to the nearest grocery store. 
Think of it as the metadata that joins everything together into a sort of framework that allows your brain to understand and remember things. This type of memory is vital in navigation, spatial and episodic memory as well as pattern recognition. Memory that is independent of context on the other hand is much simpler. It's looking at your car keys and recognizing that one, they're car keys, two, that you've seen them before, and three, that they belong to you. And those two kinds of memory operate in independent parts of the brain, with context-dependent memory largely residing in the hippocampus and context-independent memory in the perirhinal cortex. As you can see from the table, the two types of memory are very different from one another, with context-dependent memory in the hippocampus being significantly slower, but also much richer, more powerful and versatile than the context-independent type of memory that takes place in the perirhinal cortex, that you rely on for these instant clicks like seeing a friend's face and recognizing or remembering that you know that person. And to learn more about what happens when both the perirhinal cortex and hippocampus fail to work as what occurs in medial temporal amnesia, head over and check out my video on patient HM and how we came to learn most of what we know about memory and how it works. But, but wait, make sure you finish this video first. But how? How does eating too much sugar affect your hippocampus and memory. So the clever scientists had a really clever experiment to test that out and they were actually able to prove that excess sugar consumption led to drastic changes in the gut microbiome with one family of bacteria showing marked elevation, that family being the parabacteroids. Specifically, P. Johnsoni and P. Distastonis, absolutely no idea if I'm pronouncing them right by the way. Looking forward to being told off in the comments though. The scientists realized that they could induce the same memory deficits by introducing bacteria from the parabacteroids family into the guts of young rats that were being fed a normal, healthy diet without the excess sugar. And voila! The rats, they showed the same memory deficits as those that had been fed a high sugar diet, indicating that they had the same deficits in hippocampal dependent memory function. It's also worth noting that excess sugar consumption resulted in generalized gut dysbiosis with elevated levels of Clostridaceae, Mogibacteriaceae and Enterobacteriaceae bacteria, but that it was only the parabacteroids that were able to produce those effects on memory when introduced into the gut alone. It's believed that parabacteroids in the gut affect the brain's memory centers by deregulating dopamine signaling pathways in the brain through altering gene expression. In fact, when the scientists compared the rats that had been fed a sugar-rich diet with the controls, they found an increased expression in 11 genes and decreased expression in another 10 genes. Some of these genes, including FAP100 and EEPD1, are known to play an important role in regulating cell survival, migration, differentiation, and DNA repair. And while it's unclear how parabacteroids do this, it's worth remembering that your gut has its own nervous system, the enteric nervous system that is known to be functionally linked to your central nervous system. The two are known to affect each other and are functionally linked. This is why some people can experience bouts of diarrhea after periods of prolonged anxiety or psychological stress. So, in summary, scientists think it's likely that gut dysbiosis produced by excess childhood consumption of sugar affects the expression of vital genes that regulate dopamine signaling in the brain, and particularly in the hippocampus, and that the end result of this is deficits in context-dependent memory that are only observed later in life. Which brings me on to my final point. What about excess sugar consumption during adulthood? Well, while it's never a good idea to consume too much sugar, memory doesn't appear to be affected whatsoever by excess sugar consumption during adulthood. Leading some scientists to think that a developing child or adolescent's brain may be just more vulnerable to the deleterious effects of dietary sugar. Just something to think about the next time you give your child a sweet treat. Unfortunately for the rest of us, it might just be a little too late. And that's it for this week. <laughs> Thank you for watching and I really hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, then don't forget to give this video a thumbs up, it really helps. And if you haven't done so already, subscribe to the channel for more videos just like this. 
I look forward to reading all of your comments, so tell me what you thought of the video in the comments below. Love you all to bits and see you next week, and until then, you can watch my video on dopamine and the important role it plays in motivation and in learning. See you all.